So what we have here are four uh, different good quality gluten-free breads chosen from across a wide range of European markets. And what I think we should do now is carefully look at these and evaluate each one of them. The most evident to start with, I guess, is the volume. Right. Uh, so let's take a look at the volume. I um, clearly see that two of the breads are standing out. Um, mm -hmm. Agree. The next step is to smell, mm -hmm. taste. Very crumbly. Mm -hmm. Much more like a normal bread. Mm -hmm. uh, what about the softness of them? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I feel that uh, this one is uh, quite firm in it, a bit dry seems it, this one, uh, but mm. this one is mm. also um, been frozen, could be right. a result of the, the freezing process. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, the other ones are mm. quite okay, I think. Yeah. Yeah, and if you look at the structures as well, the crumb structures within the, uh, the loaves, this one here on the right is clearly the finest. Structure. Definitely. Yes. Uh, it's a little difficult to say, but perhaps between these two in the middle is the most open. But you can also comment on the fragility when you talk about structure. Oh yeah. Um, if you yeah. look here, this one is uh, it breaks. very, very fragile. Yeah. And breaking very easily. Mm. And that one is perhaps the best of the the four. Looking at the softness of some of these breads, clearly there's, uh, there's more that we could do with, uh, with enzymes and uh, increasing the shelf life. That will also help with the sustainability as well, I think. So to me, uh, what this shows me is that there's very much a wide, wide variance in quality. Even though these are you know, from different markets, there's a wide range of opportunities to perhaps tailor a solution to improve the quality of all these breads. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm.